So we've been having fun seeing lots of transformations, and now I want to share with you a transformation that's known as a reflection. A reflection. This is basically where we just kind of take everything and look at its opposite by basically putting a negative sign in front of stuff. So let me show you exactly what I mean with, a, with an interesting example. So let's consider the function g of x equals negative the square root of x plus 2. Now we know what the plus 2 does, right? That takes whatever we had here and we just raise it 2. So that's a translation up 2. But it's this negative sign that I want us to think about right now, because that's an example of a reflection. In fact, it's a reflection over the x-axis. Because if you think about what's happening here, we have a, a kind of a familiar function, namely the square root function. And that's where I want us to start our story. So let's consider f of x equals the square root of x. Now that's the kind of starting function, the familiar function, the easy function that I want us to think about. And then notice that to go from here to the minus, what I'm doing is I'm taking every single y value, right, f of x is y, every single y value, and I'm changing the sign. And what does that do? It means that if I had a point that was way up here, and here's the axis, it's now going to be down here. And do you see how that's going to start to actually produce a reflection around the x-axis? That's what happens when you put a negative sign in front of a function. So in this case, the g function that we're looking at is really negative f of x plus 2. And now this transformation is clear. What we're going to do is we're first going to reflect the f of x function over the x-axis, and then we're going to shift it up 2. And if we do that, let's see what happens. So first we start off with the graph of f of x equals the square root of x. And you know what that looks like. It looks like kind of half of a, a wing of a, a parabola on its side. And now what do I want to do? What I want to do is I want to look at the reflection over the x-axis. Take every y value and make it negative. Take every y value and make it negative. So how would I see that? The way that I would see that is by just imagining I could move this thing. And now I just reflect it. So if you reflect it over, oh, you know, I should have cut this first. You know what? Let me do this right now live for you. I'm sorry. This should have been cut. It's kind of fun to see me do it. Because you might say, gee, how does he do that magic? Well, that's all I just did. I just cut it. OK, now look. So there it is. Now, to look at negative f of x, what that means is I take every y value and look at its opposite sign, which in this case just reflects, whoop, boom, over the x-axis. So this right here, this piece, is the graph of negative f of x. It's the flip of this. And now the plus 2 means I have to actually do a translation two units up. There's one unit, and there's two units. And so in fact, what you see here, this represents the graph of the function g. So the graph of the function g is literally that, Ooh, which I will do for you live, apparently. <laughs> I love math, don't you? I'll do it right now live. It's kind of the, the lower part of the wing of a parabola that's on its side. I sometimes draw these really well, and somehow right now I don't seem to be in a half drawing parabola mood. Do you notice that? But check it out over there. It looks beautiful over there. Anyway, it's kind of that half wing which I've tried to capture here. And that's the, that's the graph of g. And notice that we actually graph g without plotting any points, but really finding out a seed function, and then, in this case, doing a, a reflection over the x-axis, and then a vertical translation up to units. So, so that's the idea. Now, you could actually look at a table if you wanted to. So here's a table of, of f of x values. So at 0, it's 0. At 1, the square root of 1 is 1. At 4, the square root of 4 is 2. And you could actually now use these various transformations to actually produce the table for g, right? Because what do you do? You take this answer, and you look at its negative, which in this case is still 0. And now you add 2, and so you get 2. You take a look at this value, you look at its negative, which in this case is negative 1, and you add 2, which will give you 1. And you take this value, you multiply it by negative 1, that gives you negative 2, and then you add 2, and so you get 0. 
And so that gives you a corresponding table. Again, I never even went back to the original function. I just used these different transformations, in this case, a, um, a reflection over the x-axis and a vertical translation of two units up, and check it out. It conforms. At 0, we're at 2. Bang. At 1, we're at 1. Bang. And at 4, we're at 0. It checks. So you can see the power of looking at reflections that adds to our arsenal of translations, translations and transformations. Therefore, all sorts of transformations we can use, the translations and the reflections and everything, to take functions that we know and somehow move them around to create graphs of new functions, functions that at first appeared mysterious, like negative square root of x plus 2, which really are quite familiar. It's just the square root of x function where we did two things to it. We gave it a reflection, and then we lifted it up a little bit. It's basically giving a function a facelift. Anyway, enjoy thinking about these types of transformations, namely reflections, in your own life and with your own functions. I'll see you soon.